Hi, I'm Rod Miller, and you're watching Astro Brief. This is brief number four for Friday, December 3rd, 2021. Venus Maximus, Comet Leonard, and three budget telescopes for EAA. Adjust your finder and hit that guide button. Astro Brief starts now. Okay, let's get started with a quick night sky update for this week. We've got some very cool stuff. Uh, Friday, December 3rd, Venus will achieve its maximum brightness this evening. Venus will shine at a spectacular magnitude of negative 4.66. Uh, the Venus crescent phase will be apparent in pretty much any telescope, spotting scope, binoculars, uh, just about anything you have, you should be able to see it. Just be sure that the sun's fully set before you start using any optical aids. A comet discovered January 3rd, 2021 by G.J. Leonard is predicted to grow to naked eye brightness during December and then pass the sun at perihelion on January 3rd. The first few days of December, Comet Leonard will rise around midnight. Each night it'll travel rapidly eastward near the bright star Arcturus. And although the comet will brighten day by day, it'll also be getting closer and closer to dawn or the morning sun. So try to see it sooner rather than later. On Saturday, December 4th, the December new moon will occur. It, at its new phase, the moon is traveling between the Earth and the sun. And since sunlight can only reach the far side of the moon and the moon's in the same region of the sky as the sun, the moon becomes completely hidden from view for just about a day. This new moon will also produce a total solar eclipse visible inside a narrow track that crosses West Antarctica and the Ross Sea. A partial eclipse should be visible over the rest of Antarctica, South Africa, Tasmania, and the South Atlantic. If current predictions hold, the morning around Thursday, December 9th will offer some fine opportunities to see Leonard when it's high and shining in the dark, moonless sky. The comet won't reach peak brightness for several more days, but its location one-third of the way up in the eastern sky should provide good views of it in binoculars and possibly even with unaided eyes. Okay, that's it for that. Another classic astronomy book review. Um, here's just one more of those classic astronomy books that I love. The Backyard Astronomy Guide. If you can only have one astronomy book, this is probably the one to get. This is a massive volume, and it attempts to cover just about everything you need to know about backyard astronomy. Where it doesn't thoroughly cover a subject, it recommends additional resources and books to sate your quest for more Astro Info goodness. Uh, my version is the third edition. The current edition, I think, is the fourth edition. This book's been in print for probably about 30 years, and it covers, as I said, just about everything from getting started and naked eye observing, uh, choosing and using a telescope, what and how to observe with your telescope, and even gets into astrophotography. Also, if you're just getting started, uh, I have two courses up on Udemy in Backyard Astronomy. You can check out the uh, links in the show notes below. Okay, on to our quest for a sub $1,000 smart scope. But first, a uh, quick shout out to JC Moore 1 uh, for his correction in the comment section. So he's absolutely correct that all the th all things being equal, 2.4 gigahertz has a much farther range and better penetration through walls and obstacles than 5 gigahertz. So my correction in my case is I live in a condo complex that is so saturated with 2.4 gigahertz, I literally cannot connect to my router from 20 feet away. 2.4 gigahertz uh, just doesn't work for me. 5 gigahertz, there's only two routers in the complex and I can connect from 60 feet away. I hope that clarifies things and please do keep up the comments and uh, keep me on track, keep me honest. Okay, this week we're going to look at budget telescopes for our project. The Skywatcher Evo Guider 50 DX, the SV Boney SV503 ADED, and the Skywatcher Skymax 102 Maxudov. So, why these scopes? Well, mostly it started because I was looking at the Red Cat 51, which is a 
beautiful Petzl designed quadruplet APO scope, but out of my price range. The Evo Guider 50 is an ED scope with a close set of specs. Although it's only an ED doublet, it has a similar focal length. Take a look at the comparison here. To get the Evo Guider a little closer to the red cap, we will need a field flattener. Skywatcher makes their own, and Star Arizona also has one. I chose the Star Arizona Evo FF, which will allow us to use a filter wheel and or a mirrorless camera with the Evo Guider. The Skywatcher version has a short back focus, and it won't work with any of the accessories that I really want to use. It's also important to note that these are field flatteners only and not focal reducers. So, this is a guide scope on steroids. The fit and finish is excellent. For an imaging scope, it seems kind of tiny, but our goal is pleasing images on a screen for live streaming, outreach, and just relaxing and enjoying observing from indoors. All right, the second scope we're looking at is the SV Boney SV503. It's an 80 millimeter doublet. Uh, the fit and finish on this scope is really pretty good for the price point. You can get a good selection of 80 millimeter, 80 millimeter ED doublet scopes in the $600 to $800 price range. And I've seen the SV503 as low as $330 pre-pandemic and a high of about $450. So the reason for choosing this scope was primarily budget. Um, the specs are, it's an 80 millimeter, uh, 80 millimeter, 560 millimeter focal length, making it an F7 has some synthetic FPL 51 glass and SMC coatings. It's an aluminum tube, two inch Crayford focuser, also has a 10 to one reduction on it. Um, so this is meant only as an overview and a first impression. I will do a full review on it later and uh, after I have some, have a chance to pull some starlight through it. But things are falling apart on me. And our third scope is the Skywatcher Skymax 102. This one we have because it came free with one of the uh, AZ GTI mounts that I bought off of Amazon, but it's still a nice little scope. Um, and I think it'll be great for lunar and planetary imaging. It's 102 millimeters, it's 1300 millimeter focal length, uh, making it an F12.7. Has an aluminum tube. Um, Skywatcher MHTC high transmission coatings and uh, the feel is actually pretty good. I've played with some inexpensive Macs and they were all plastic and they just really felt cheap. The focuser on this is, is firm and smooth. Um, the accessories are nothing special. It came with a plastic red dot finder and uh, pretty much a standard mirror diagonal. Uh, nothing great. But again, I think this will be good for lunar and planetary imaging and some of the smaller DSOs, this might be a little, a good little EAA scope. So we're going to pop it up on the mount and we're going to try it out. Our AZ GTI mount uh, will handle a payload of about 11 pounds or 4.9 kilos total. And none of these scopes plus all of our accessories come close to taxing that capacity. The 50DX uh, weighs... Uh, 1.9 pounds or just under a kilo. The Skymax 102 weighs uh, 4.25 pounds or 1.9 kilos. The 503 is the heavyweight of the three, weighing in at 6 pounds or about 2.73 kilos, including the rings and the dovetail. So that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, next week we're going to start looking at cameras. We're going to be looking at the uh, SV Boney SV uh, 305 and I still am waiting on Star Arizona to send me the uh, ZW 0178 MC camera so if you like the content please don't forget to click subscribe and give us a like and if you want to be notified next time an episode is out click the little bell icon clear skies every one of you listening to my voice tell the world tell this to everybody wherever they are Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the skies.